Tesla has confirmed that it is officially losing half of the $7,500 tax credit on two Model 3 trims starting next year. Buyers of all Model 3 vehicles, depending on their own eligibility based on income, have had access to a $7,500 federal tax credit since the reform of the electric vehicle incentive program that was implemented in 2023. Now, buyers are not the only ones with eligibility criteria. The electric vehicles also need to be eligible based on things like price and source of components. The component criteria, and especially the battery material criteria, are changing every year and becoming stricter to include more batteries and materials built in North America. With the sticker criteria starting next year, Tesla has warned that it expects to lose part of the tax credit on some Model 3 models. Today, in an overnight update to its online design studio, Tesla has confirmed that Model 3 rear-wheel drive and Model 3 long-range will see their tax credit reduced to $3,750. Customers who take delivery of a qualified new Tesla and meet all federal requirements are eligible for a tax credit up to $7,500. Tax credit will reduce to $3,750 for Model 3 rear-wheel drive and Model 3 long-range on January 1, 2024. Take delivery by December 31st for full tax credit. Only for eligible cash or loan purchases. Tesla doesn't elaborate on why it will lose the credits on those models, but it is believed to have to do with the origin of some battery components. The change also comes with the tax credit becoming available as a point of sale incentive, meaning that it can be directly applied at the purchase of a vehicle rather than returned as a tax credit. The Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, has released its official Tesla Cybertruck filings, revealing additional details about the Tesla Cybertruck. The information in the documents is not earth-shattering by any measure, but some details are worth noting. For starters, the Certification Summary Information Report, filed on November 21, 2023, just 10 days before the buoyant delivery event, mentions the total voltage of battery packs at 816 volts. Battery energy capacity at 150 amp hours, we believe, and battery specific energy at 170 watt hours per kilogram, we believe. That leaves us with 122.4 kilowatt hours of energy capacity, in line with the unofficial value of 123 kilowatt hours in some reports. Surprisingly, Tesla does not release the battery capacity of its EVs. The initial application for the Certificate for Conformity was filed by Tesla on November 11, 2023, and that document confirms the presence of a heat pump. Well, that's not entirely surprising because most new Teslas get the heat pump, and we also saw some spy shots early this year, shared by members of the Cybertruck Owners Club. That exposed the cooling systems behind the front. For those who don't know, Tesla's ingenious heat pump design is its solution to minimize heat losses and maximize range and efficiency. In principle, heat pumps reuse the heat generated by the battery and drive units to warm the cabin, save energy, and improve the range on long drives. They're crucial in the winter when range losses tend to be higher. Here's what the document says about the heat pump. The heater unit incorporating a variable speed electric fan is located in the front of the chassis tub with ducting directing the blown air to defrost. Face level and floor level vents in the passenger compartment. The heater element is of the heat pump, drawing HV electrical energy from the battery pack high voltage. It goes on to mention how the HVAC system reduces energy usage in both heating and cooling scenarios. The energy required to heat the cabin varies by weather and occupant comfort needs, but on average consumes approximately 10% of the total energy available for driving. However, even in moderately cold weather, 0 degrees Celsius, consumption can increase to 25% or more. A heat pump consumes a small amount of electrical energy to thermodynamically upgrade low temperature, less useful thermal energy to higher temperature, more useful thermal energy, making it suitable for occupant comfort. 
That is, for a given electrical power input, a heat pump will return 1 to 5 times in useful heating power. An electrical cabin heater provides one ratio 1 in heating power and therefore is far less efficient. That said, we also found a quirky little detail about the Cybertruck's charging. The charging port, mounted on the rear left fender, will put on a colorful display regarding its state of charge. For example, a solid white illumination indicates that the charging cable can be removed or inserted. An orange light would indicate that the cable isn't properly latched, and a flashing blue light would signal that charging is underway as expected, among others. Another thing is, the curb weight of the Cyber Beast is 6,898 pounds, and the all-wheel drive tips scale at 6,669 pounds. The gross vehicle weight rating is 9,169 pounds for both variants. We were hoping to find details about the rear-wheel drive Cybertruck, due in 2025, as well. But the EPA hasn't made those files public yet. That said, the EPA documents are publicly available, so anyone can review them. Let us know if you find any additional interesting nuggets of information worth highlighting. What do you think about Tesla officially losing half of the $7,500 tax credit on two Model 3 trims and the Tesla Cybertruck battery size? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. Thanks for watching and see you in the next.